What do you think about when you hear the name Detroit, meaning Detroit, Michigan? What comes to mind? Do you think about wealth or do you think about poor, crime? What do you think about? Did you know Detroit's nickname used to be the Paris of the Midwest, Motown, Motor City? Did you know in the 50s, Detroit was the richest city in the world per capita until things happen? And we are looking at similar trends taking place with New York City, the Big Apple, the central of the world, the capital of the world. Why is everybody or majority of the people sitting there saying, I may be leaving New York? 50% of people making over $100,000 a year income are considering leaving New York City. So today, we're going to dissect what happened to New, uh, Detroit. Then I'm going to show you what's going on with New York City. Then I'll give you a few mistakes New York City is making today on why they could potentially be the next Detroit. So having said that, let's take a look at this. So 30 places in America that are getting poor. Let's see which one is getting poor the most. This is an article that's a month ago. If you go all the way down, top five, Buffalo, New York, Milwaukee, Newark, Cleveland. Look who's number one. New uh, Detroit. Change in per capita income, minus 6,300. Change in media income, minus 42,000. Change in population, minus 834,000 people have left. And change in poverty rate is 328%. So we just talked about what? The cities that are getting poor, right? Now let's take a look at crime. CBS News, November 9, 2020. Three, four months ago, the most dangerous cities in America ranked. Okay, let's go. Who's number 50? Rochester, New York. You know, who's number 35? New Haven, Connecticut. Who's number 29? Dayton, Ohio. Who's number 20? Chattanooga, Tennessee. Who's number 12? Oakland, California. Who's number four? Baltimore, Maryland. Who's number one? Detroit, Michigan is number one in 2019. 275 people were murdered. Detroit overlooked St. Louis as the nation's new most dangerous city. Detroit's violent crime rate is 1965 incidents per 100,000. Now, when you see this, we got to go a little bit deeper. Here's some data for you to be thinking about. Detroit's population has plunged over 63% since 1950s. It's down 26% since 2000. Unemployment rate in 2009 cracked 27.8%. Unemployment rate in 2013 at 16%. Even though the population fell 63%, municipal workforce fell just by 40%, adding to the strain on public finances. Again, what does this mean? This is population leave-in, which is 63%. But municipal, meaning city employees, only dropped 40%, meaning they had more government employees in Detroit that taxpayer are paying their jobs. They kept their jobs, but people who are creating the jobs, paying the taxes, they left. That is catastrophic for that to be taking place. But it tells you how politics is killing Detroit. Detroit has the highest volume. You see all this. It's five times higher than national average. 40% of the street lights don't work. 78,000 structures and 66,000 lots are abandoned. Arson accounts for 1,000 to 12,000 fires per year. 60% of those arson fires are dilapidated or empty buildings. Now let's go even a little bit deeper with Detroit because we're about to get into New York in a minute, but stay with me here. Detroit owes $14.9 $14.9 billion in debt. By comparison, the total debt by all the other Michigan cities combined in less than $12.8 billion. Let me say this one more time. Detroit, one city in Michigan, owes 14.9. All the other cities in Michigan, it's a big state, is only $12.8 billion. And what they're bringing in in Motor City is $325. Operating deficit last year was more than uh, $325 million. They're not even paying their long-term debt. They're just like, listen, we can't even pay for it. They have no plans of paying the debt. They're just kind of saying, look, we're not in a good situation. We don't know what we're going to be doing. But how do we get here? How do we get here? So Detroit, 1701, founded by a Cadillac. Literally, the French settler named Antoine Cadillac, to be exact. Fact. City is the name Detroit River, which the word Detroit in French means straight. 1760, there's a big war that lasts a long time for Detroit. Eventually, 1796, Detroit finally is under American control. Population in 1890, that's 30, 24 years later, is $205,000. 205,000 people. Population in 1920, 1 million. From 1910 to 1950, the city was a boom equal to any gold rush we've ever had in America. Fact, in the early 1900s, Detroit was the automotive capital of the world. Henry Ford 
founded Ford Motor Company in 1903, while Dodge Brothers and Chrysler also did business in the same city. 1950, car makers from Chrysler to Cadillac, Studebaker to Dodge had plants in or near the city limits at 138 square miles. The city could accommodate Boston, San Francisco, and Manhattan all within its city limits. 1950, look at the population, 1.8 million. From 205,000 to 1.8 million in 60 years, 200,000 out of that 1.8 million worked in manufacturing, which is about one in 10. 1959, Barry Gordy launches Motown Records. Who are the big stars he gets? Michael Jackson, Jackson 5, Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, The Supremes, Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye. I'm, I'm talking like goats is what they get. 1960, Detroit is the richest city per capita in America, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, which becomes the richest city in the world is what we're talking about, right? What else did they do? Their stoves, ships, cigars, pharmaceuticals, beer, rail cars were also produced during this time. 2013 population from 1.8 million, it goes to what? 714,000. Fewer than 20,000 people of the 714,000 work in manufacturing. One in 50. Remember what it was? One in 10, 200,000. It goes from 200,000 to 20,000. That's 90% drop off. The population of Detroit has fallen back 100 years. Obviously, we can't go into this, the exodus on what's happened. Why the decline? Racial riots in 1967 engulfed the city, but the most destructive one occurred in 1967. A police confrontation sparked a five-day riot that left 43 dead, 467 injured, 7,200 arrests, and more than 2,000 buildings destroyed. Now crime, seven out of 10 crimes are unsolved. You know what this reminds me of is what happened in New York City during COVID. The riots that was taking place, you kind of seen some of the similarities. Watch this. Lost tax revenue when population declined, lack of industry diversification, globalization of car industry, and then obviously a bunch of different things that happened there. White fight, 1960 Detroit population was 1.6 million. Blacks were 29%, whites were 70%. Today's black comprise 84% of the population in Detroit. L let me read this one more time. Blacks were 29%, 70%. It was good to go. Today's 84%, whites is 8%. It was more, uh, uh, what do you call it, balanced. Now it's more lopsided on what's taking place. And the poor are taking the biggest hit today in Detroit due to certain policies that the city came out with. So if you look at the other plants, now there are just two big factories left in Detroit, Chrysler and GM. The number of vacant housing units doubled in the past decade to nearly 80,000. I can go on and on showing. Let me just give you some interesting data here. Look at this one here. A home costs less than a car in Detroit. Let me say that one more time. You buy a home in Detroit, it's cheaper than buying a brand new car, okay, in Detroit. Median listing, $21,000. Comparable to a car, $21,000. Chevy Malibu. Housing price, 5.2%. Median household income, $29,000. Unemployment, 9.2%. How bad is it when, it when you call 911? You ready? 58 minutes. You call 911. 58 minutes before a cop shows up. That means you call 911. You say, I'm about to rob a bank. You go rob the bank. You leave. The cop still hasn't shown up. And you ran away with your money. That's how bad it is right now in Detroit. 8.7 times a crime by police. 21 minutes approximate time it takes to respond to first calls, fires. Only 35,000 of it. You get the idea of what's going on here with the stats and top 10 celebrities that born out of Detroit. Tim Allen, Sonny Bono. Jerry Bruckheimer, Bruce Campbell, Alice Cooper, Eminem, Madonna, Tom Selleck, Jeff Daniels, Francisco. I mean, Detroit was Detroit when you think about this place. I'm going to put the links below for you to be thinking about it. But a bigger part of what happened with Detroit is taking place today with New York. This article here, every one of these I'm reading, I'm going to put below for you to read. This may be a good one for you to read. It's the following. Imagine a city where all the major economic planks of the status or progressive platforms have been enacted. A living wage ordinance far above the federal minimum wage for all public employees. Everybody wants, you know, the politicians right now are saying, let's do $15 minimum wage. A school system that spends significantly more per person than national average. A powerful school employee union that militantly defends exceptional pay, benefits to job security. It has one for its members. Other government employee unions that do the same for their members. A tax system that aggressively redistributes income from businesses and the wealthy to the poor and to government bureaucrats. Do you notice that happening anywhere else? Maybe a great city called, I don't know, New York City. Now let's look at some of the stats with New York City. Here's Wall Street Journal, okay? 
Wall Street Journal comes out with an article, the old New York won't come back. This is just a week ago, okay? Look what it says here. Here are some numbers from the partnership of from New York City Business Group. The city has lost 500,000 private sector jobs since March 2020, COVID. Tens of thousands of small businesses, 5,000 restaurants have closed. Less than 15% of office workers are back in the work for, workplace they left a year ago. Let me say this one more time. Less than 15% are back. It should say something different. It should say 85% are not back. So that means that there's 1,000 employees, 850 employees are not back. They're still at home. They're not working. Then you continue. Tourism, an approximately $70 billion industry, won't be back until theater is back. When? Judith Miller had a good piece in City Journal on how Broadway's older houses can't be retrofitted for social distancing and still make a profit. No one is sure theater goers will rush back. Theaters will be reborn. Man will always have shows and stories. But as what? Whatever comes, hybrid productions, etc. So you read this part. Then you come here. Look what this one says. This is the scary one. 300,000 residents of high-income neighborhoods have fled change of address forms with the U.S. Postal Service. You see, New York cannot hide this data because it's U.S. Postal Service saying 300,000 residents have changed their address. New York City, maybe you're doing something wrong. You know where they are going to? To lower income tax, no income tax states. Those that have a friendlier attitude towards money making and that presumably aren't going hard left. Florida has gotten so cheeky that this month, its chief financial officer, who's a value tainer, sent a letter inviting the New York Stock Exchange to relocate to Miami. Well, let's see what else this is going to tell us here. This is from NYPD. This is not me. This is NYPD two months ago. Ready? At the same time, the New York PD in 2020 confronted a, a plus 97% increase in shooting incidents. This is during COVID where people are apparently staying home. 97% shooting goes up, 44% increase in number of murders amid the challenges of an ongoing international health pandemic that has strained city residents and that the police sworn to ensure public safety for everyone. Burglaries increased by 42%, car theft increased by 67%. Through it all, NYPD has worked to mitigate violence as reflected in a 29% increase in an annual gun arrest for 2020 versus 2019, including 2,057 gun arrests in the last four months. I mean, this is NYPD. This is not any other person that's saying this. And then if you look at this here, the top 15 most expensive cities in America to live in, go to number one. What do you think is number one? Okay, Manhattan, okay? Oh, Manhattan, medium home prices, $2,045,000. Let me say that one more time. Medium home prices, $2,045,000. Median monthly rent. $5,100, $5, okay? Then you go to number three. It, number two is San Francisco, most expensive. Then it's Honolulu, who was number four. Brooklyn. Number five, Washington, et cetera, et cetera. Look who's number 10. Ready, number 10? Queens, New York. Three out of the 10 most expensive cities in America to live in is in New York. And if we continue and look at this, you see articles like this. This is just four months ago. If the wealthiest New Yorkers flee the city, they could take more than $133 billion with them. A report from Bloomberg found that the top 1% of New Yorkers had a combined of $133 billion in income in 2018 that paid. You ready? All these rich people, all these evil rich people, they paid 42.5% of the city's total income, including AOC salary, just so you know, was paid by all these rich, greedy people. That means 0.46% of the city's population accounted for a whopping $4.9 billion in tax revenues. Obviously, those wealthy New Yorkers leaving could be a major blow to the city's economy, and a number of ultra-wealthy city residents may have already shrunk due to pandemic. I can go into more data here to give you, but, you know, estimated $300 billion of wealth has left. And even before COVID, 2,600 people a week were leaving New York. This is not a new thing. They let everybody. They were losing 360, uh, 376 a day. LA was number two at 260. Florida receives it, Georgia's receiving it, Houston's receiving it, Austin's receiving it, Phoenix is receiving it, Dallas is receiving it, Illinois is losing it. That's that great city of New York, leaving New York high earners in finance and tech explain why they left the world's greatest city. And this explains all the different stats on what they left, different stories. I left for taxes, I left for freedom, I just kind of want to be left alone, etc., etc., etc. 
on what New York City is going through. So what does all this stuff have to do with anything? Here's what it has to do. Um, Detroit creates an incredible economy, ridiculous jobs, 200,000 manufacturers. Rich people want to go on vacation, they go to Detroit. Oh, we're going to go to Detroit. Most beautiful homes, incredible income being made, crushing it, helping out the country, creating economy, innovation. Then politicians show up. You're too rich. They're making way too much money. This is not fair. And people are like, what do you mean this is not fair? They should pay you more. You think they should pay me more? They should pay you more. Maybe they should pay you more. No, they should pay you more. You go to work. You should pay me more. Now they divide the employee with the employer. Okay, now there's fight. Politicians are winning. Oh, we got division. This is good. Now they come to me. You need me, politician. I'm going to get it done for you because you need me. And I'm going to fight for you because it's all about you. I'm the politician. I am here for you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. The boss says, oh, man, one employee, 50 employees, 1,000 employees, 10,000 employees, 20,000 employees. We're sorry. Maybe you're right. We're bad people. Guess what? We're leaving Detroit. Good luck finding a job. But, 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 no, 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 no. I, I didn't mean leave. I just mean like maybe pay me a little bit more. No, no, it's okay. No, no, we're bad. We're bad. You go ahead and figure out a way to work for somebody else. Okay, maybe I'll go to the next car company and I'll bitch at them. And then the other one leaves. And then the other one leaves. And you go from 200,000 manufacturing jobs to 20,000 manufacturing jobs. And the same trend, you are sitting in a beautiful city called New York City. One of my favorite cities in the world is New York City. I enjoy the food. I enjoy the culture. I enjoy the melting pot. I enjoy the accent. I enjoy the swagger. I enjoy the fire. I enjoy the competition. I enjoy the shopping. I enjoy everything about New York, except for the policies. It's the policies that are destroying New York because the policies of an AOC is sitting up against the Jeff Bezos and saying, all you care about is rich people. You want to bring 25,000 jobs in New York City because you want to raise rent in New York City by bringing 25,000 jobs to New York City with an average salary of $150,000 a year. No, we're not going to do that. Jeff Bezos cannot come. We're not giving him no tax benefits. And Jeff says, okay, cool. <laughs> no problem, buddy. We will leave. They left. Amazon becomes nearly a $2 trillion company. It's a very big company today. And New York could have benefited from it. But AOC didn't like that because it's too high of a salary to bring to New York City. God forbid those rents are raised all of a sudden, the $5,100 rent that's going to be raised, as if it's not high already. So you know what happens when you're like that? Here's what happens when you're like that. When you're married to somebody or you're dating someone and things are good with you and her or things are good with you and him, everything's good. Then you go home. Your mother or your in-laws or your friends or somebody says, you should spend more money on you. Why doesn't he buy you better stuff? Why are you wearing these clothes? You should wear nicer clothes. Why don't you have the latest shoes? I hear he's rich. Shouldn't he buy you a nicer car? Shouldn't he? And there's a, well, well, no, but he's nice. He's good. No, he should spend more money on you. Then the girl comes home. Well, babe, um, I think I deserve this. And the husband's like, well, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Well, I think I deserve this. Babe, I'm so confused. Like, we were just good like the last week. Yeah, but I don't think you're taking care of me. And, and guy's confused. Where are we going with this? Or vice versa. You know, guy goes to work and I go, so if I was your girl, I would do this for you. I would do that for you. I would do this for you. Okay. Then you come home and say, babe, you don't do this for me. You don't do nothing for me. Babe, what are you talking about? What do you want me to do for you? That message, that voice, that's the politician. Once it comes into marriage, it divides. And eventually there's a divorce. And eventually the other person that leaves is going to say, you know, he wasn't as bad as I thought he was. He took care of me, gave me a nice place, was respectful to me, was a great father, or she was actually good to me. She was a good wife. She did this. She was also a worker. She was also a provider. She was playful. What the hell was I thinking? New York City, if you're listening to this, agree, disagree, fine. Go do your own research. And the next time you think about voting for your politicians, do not let politicians that have access to more wealth than ever before in New York divide you against job creators because it's the job creators and the innovators that made it possible for New York City to become the financial capital of the world and hopefully the populace of New York City who are the employees working maybe for the employer doesn't all of a sudden turn against the employer and force them out of your state because they will gladly come to Florida, go to Texas, go to Tennessee, and move all those jobs that they have today in New York.
Having said that, I want to hear your thoughts, comment below, but I got another video for you to watch. It has to do with why 15,000 apartments in New York are empty today. If you haven't watched this video, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.